Only $35 for N64, Dreamcast, Nintendo DS, and PSP? Let's see if it's any good. Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by. This is Retro Fun Tech. So today I have the R36S device here for review. Like I said in the beginning, I picked this up from AliExpress for only $35. This device ranges from $32 to around $50 or you can get it on Amazon for a lot more. But for that price, you could get something a little bit better. So let's see how good or bad this is, and if it's a steal for that $35 to $40 price point. All right, let's unbox this thing. The box is pretty cool. There's some neat design on there, and they actually show what the product is which you don't generally get from something that's as cheap as this is. Now you can see that there's other colors for this device. I opted for the white one just because it ended up being the cheapest on AliExpress when I was looking. I'm not sure why. If you want the orange one, that's probably gonna be a little bit more. And I kind of wish that I got the orange one, but oh well. Here we have the manual, which surprisingly doesn't say anything about it being a clone of this device. This is the Pow Kitty RGB20S that was all the rage on TikTok some time ago. I think it's mostly because of the cute stickers. The R36S isn't cool enough to have a tiger sticker, and that's probably because it's really a no-name knockoff of this device. There's a whole thing about the R36S being sort of a clone of that device, but I'm not gonna get into all of that. Anyway, back to the device. It's nice, pretty lightweight, and easy to hold. The screen is big, and we will see how it looks when we turn it on. The buttons are good, a little thunky. It feels like there's a little hesitation when you push them down. Hopefully that won't be a problem in gameplay. The D-pad is big and not bad, also a little thunky. The joysticks press in, so hopefully they have L3 and R3. The left side has the power button, a reset button, and a slot for the games card, or TF2. The right side has the volume buttons and the operating system card. On the back, the shoulder buttons are pretty clicky and loud. There's a removable plate for the battery on the back with a generic no-name battery, and you can see it just pops right out. So pretty easy to access if you ever need to change it. There are two USB-C ports on the bottom. One is an OTG port, also headphone jack and speaker. Here are the specs for the device. The stats are nothing to scream at, but again, for $35 plus, dollars, this has some potential. This apparently can play up to PSP, which is very intriguing for the price point. It's running on an RK3326 chipset. I'm not expecting a ton of amazing performance, but we might be surprised with what this handheld can do. So the R36S is running an older version of the custom firmware Arc OS with Emulation Station on the back end. That's very nice to see. However, I wasn't able to get the Wi-Fi to ever connect and I heard that was an issue. So any upgrades to the firmware or adding box art will most likely have to be done on a computer. But again, that might be a little advanced for someone who is likely looking to pick this up and just play it right out of the box. That's honestly the draw to this device. Typically for these budget handhelds, the user is looking to just turn it on and play some games. They don't care about changing anything or updating the custom firmware. Okay, just for fun, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of some of the vertical handhelds you see in the video. Here is the MiU Mini Plus. Oh, and the Tiger handheld wants some love too. The R36S is a little bit bigger than the MiU Mini Plus. They actually both have the same size screen at 3.5 inches and also the resolution is 640 by 480.
Also, we have a Game Boy Color, and it's pretty close in the size to this device. So before we get into the gameplay, let me run through the operating system really quickly. The build of Arc OS is from 2022, so it's a little outdated. There is a way to update the firmware on this, but we will get to that later. From the perspective of getting this device and playing it right out of the box with no configuration, it's nice to see so many games on here, especially the top titles. Sometimes you won't get any Mario games on these budget devices because the companies want to avoid the Nintendo Ninjas, and that's understandable. So one thing that I like about this firmware is that there is a screensaver option that randomly runs through some of the games on this device. So we can get an idea about gameplay for the 8-bit and 16-bit systems from that. But let's jump into gameplay. And what I'm more interested in are the mid-tier systems like N64, Dreamcast, and PSP. With a $35 device, if even a handful of those games can play, in my opinion, that's worth the price point. So here with Dreamcast Gigawing 2, this is a perfect example about how you might have to go in and change the emulator settings. So you can hear the stuttering and I'm going to show you really quick. I go in there and then I get the game actually running. Don't be afraid to go into the emulator settings and try to mess around with things because if something doesn't work, you can always go back in there and change it back to the settings that you had it before. It's really okay. You're not going to break anything. Also, I didn't show this, but when I booted the game back up after I changed the settings, the sound at the beginning, at the title screen, didn't sound like it was going to be fixed, but you can hear in gameplay that it's working. Like I said, you're going to have to mess around with it. It might be where it's playable and just the title screen sounds a little weird. But again, it's only 35 bucks, so I think, uh, you know, there's, there's some shortcomings, but obviously there's going to be some shortcomings. It's okay. You're playing Dreamcast on a $35 device. So with DS games, since this doesn't have a touchscreen, that might limit some of the games. But what I tested out actually seemed to work really well. You can toggle the screens with the shoulder buttons. I believe it's R2. Also, to access the menu for the DS emulator, called Drastic, you have to press L3, and it brings up the screen. In that menu, you can exit the game. Drastic is a little weird, but again, overlook its shortcomings. It's just neat to be able to play DS on this device. Here is Super Smash Bros. on N64, and yeah, this game isn't going to run so great. 
You can see the graphical glitches. I tried changing the emulator and the core, but that didn't really help. The more intensive games might just have issues. I was pretty happy with the array of games and systems on here, but you can always take the card out, throw it in your computer, and then add some more games. Maybe your favorites aren't on here. The list for the mid-tier systems is pretty short, and that is usually because they only put the games that will actually run on the device on the card. So if you add any N64, Dreamcast, Nintendo DS, or PSP games, just know that they may or may not run well, or at all, even. I had fun with this device, and I personally think it's a great buy at the $35 to even $45 price point. This is for someone who isn't looking to tinker with the device, doesn't care, or even know about better devices and performance out there. They just want to play some old, classic, awesome retro games. And there are a ton of them to play on here. I think this thing has over 15,000 games. I don't even know if you can get through that in a lifetime but have fun trying. So my final thoughts are that this isn't the handheld of the year by any means, but for around $35 to $40, $45, this is a pretty good little device. The buttons are not premium and really nothing on this is premium, but it's a budget device, so keep that in mind. This may make a good gift for someone. I did a video a while back on one of those little weird $15 Game Boy clones that has 300 games on it. Those are not worth it unless you are a five-year-old and you don't know any better because most of the games that are on there are just not good or even real actual games. I would definitely pick up the R36S over one of those devices. It's a very plug and play device that you could give somebody with a few instructions and I'm sure they could figure it out and have a ball. A lot of people want to be able to play retro games but have absolutely no idea where to even start and have no interest in tinkering or setting anything up at all. So for those people, if this is in your budget, get this. Sure, for more money, you can get some better devices but not many are as plug and play and play right out of the box as this is. You might have to search around for a good deal like I did. I'll leave some links in the description below. I was watching this device for a little while and finally it dropped to around $35. But even for 40 to 45, this isn't bad for that price point. Let me know in the comments below also if you would like to see a video on how to update the current version of Arc OS. I can definitely do a video on that. So what are your thoughts on the R36S? Are you going to pick one up? Is this the perfect gift for someone you know that needs a little retro gaming fun in their life? Let me know in the comments below. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, and even share this video with a friend who should really be playing some retro games. Thanks for watching. Stay awesome, everyone, and go play some games.